What's up, guys? Uh, Sebastian Jabasi, and I'm here with episode two in my Machine 101 tutorial series. Um, basically, today we're going to be going over the machine hardware, um, an overview of it, because um, I think it's really important that you know you understand how your machine works. I think it's a good idea to be familiar with the hardware as soon as possible, as soon as you unbox it, because I feel like it really adds to the workflow and the, the ease of use and you know the speed at which you do everything. Um, and I think the way learning that learning how the controller actually integrates with the software really helps it perform as an instrument rather than just a MIDI controller with software, because there's certain things like automation um, and tempo control and stuff like that that you can't do. On the so you can do it on the software, but it's it's much more. It gives it a much more human feel if you do it on the software. I mean, on the hardware. So um, definitely using it as an instrument was important because it, it can operate as an instrument, and I think that's really important. And I think if you bought machine, it's not a cheap piece of equipment. You want to use machine as it was meant to be used. Um, so another thing is I really want you guys to understand the 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 two way communication between the software and the hardware because there's there's certain things that personally I'm gonna show you what I personally do sometimes personally I go to the software for certain things and, per, and sometimes I most of the time I use the hardware um, because sometimes it's easier to just go click something than have to hold shift this button and that button rather than just click so um, I think it really it, it, it's it's the the best um, beat making solution out there right now because of um, that because of the way it works with the way the machine works with the software is it's one of a kind really so um we're gonna jump into the tutorial now um I don't have a great camera set up yet I have my flip cam um, it records in HD so this the quality should be really good it's just the sound and everything so just bear with me um yeah so you know comment rate subscribe if you're not a if you're a new machine user definitely subscribe because we have a great tutorial series coming it's really in depth I'm going over a lot of things that um, I there's a void on YouTube people don't make videos for um, so definitely check it out um, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it hope you guys enjoy it alright so let's jump into um, this this tutorial we'll start with the control section of the machine and the first button in the control section is the control button um, that control button uh, enables all these pads to act as sounds. In this mode, um, each sound can be played live and recorded into the internal sequencer. Um, at the same time, uh, it, it makes these buttons right here and these knobs right here um, are turn into the sound group and master parameters. So basically you see this, this button right here is for sound, this is for modules, group, master, and they all, all these knobs are do something different. Um, and that, that, that we'll, we'll jump, we'll go more into depth about that, but, um, basically that's your control button right there. Okay, so the next button is the step button. Um, basically in this mode, it allows your machine to operate as a step sequencer. So if I hit play right here, you'll see that the, this little light's moving. That, that's where the note is. That's where the, the sound is going to be played. So basically, let's say I'm working with kick drum. Oh, that's not kick drum. Um, right here. You see the parameters, they, they allow you to do different things. We'll jump, we'll go more into detail about that, but the step sequencer, everywhere there's a light is where a sound's going to be played. So if I went four to the floor, and I want to, you know, add some snares, add some hi-hats, let me, let me add some hi-hats real quick. And you see how easy it is to just go ahead and create a beat and erase. I can erase sounds like that. So everywhere there's a light is where um, a, a note is going to be played. So basically that's your step sequencer. Um, basically you can add more pages and it, you can make a longer playback time. Like make it make it more uh, a longer bar, like two, three, four bars. You can increase the length of every... Um, pattern on in step sequencer just like you can in control. Um, well, like I said, we'll go more into depth in it in, in the later tutorial, but that's basically your step sequencer. So right now we'll go into the next the next uh, button right here, which is browse. And I want you guys to take notice of something. See the screen? When I hit browse, um, it turns these buttons and these knobs into something that cater to the browse function. Um, basically it helps you filter these knobs and these 
these knobs and these uh, buttons help you filter um, what type of instrument or what type of sound or sample you are looking for to fill this drum kit up with. Um, so I have a pad selected. That's where my sound is going to be. And right here, right here we're going to look for, let's just say, a percussion, a kick, a kick. Um, and we want a, let me see, a vinyl kick. Um, so a cool feature that this machine comes with is a quick browse. Um, basically, I can hit load, and here's my kick. And if I want, I can just hit next to hear the next kick. And that's really, it really streamlines your workflow so you don't really have to waste a lot of time auditioning sound. So um, that's, your, that's your browse and your quick browse function. Alright, next we have your sampling button. Um, we can't, I'm not really going to go into depth about your sampling button, but just know that it really it, it, it helps you sample. You can chop and edit sounds, and let's say for instance this sound right here, um, there's the kick that we just found with Browse. Um, basically, you can, you can change it. You can edit it. If you hit edit, you can change where it ends. You can change where it ends. You can change where it begins. Um, you can do you can do a lot of uh, of, of different um, things in the sampling mode, but that's something we will discuss in a later tutorial. Okay, so next um, these buttons right here, the page buttons. Um, what these really do is just the the parameters of machine are filtered through um, these you know these two screens, and they're filtered through pages, and these just help you um, switch between pages, as you can see. Um, the parameters for these knobs. This the, the purpose of this knob is changing every time I I hit that. So now now it controls the modulation envelope attack. So if I filter that up, it changes. If I put it scroll it down, it, it changes. Go to the next page, and now this LFO, and go to the next page, and now it's the velocity. And basically, it just helps you filter through um, what these knobs and these pads up here can do. Very very simple. This snap slash save button. Currently. This snap button doesn't do anything, but the save button. Um, if you're ever, you know, you just done, you've just done something really dope. Uh, it's a really good idea to save. So all you have to do is hit shift, hold shift, and go up here and hit save, and it saves your project. Um, quick, simple, and easy. All right, next we have our auto write function. Um, basically, auto write something we're gonna discuss in detail in a later tutorial. But uh, basically, any parameter in machine. Um, can be automated and basically auto write is something you just hold and you, you know you scroll this while it's recording and it, it automates it like the Mike will filter like he it goes from filtered to unfiltered to maybe filtered again um, you can do that all here in machine with auto write which is a tutorial I'm working on a uh, Mike will type made it a uh, Mike will made it type uh, beat instruction instructional video so um, basically, all this does is you hold this down and you just change a parameter. You can change it and then change it back, and it just records that and then it uh, plays that back.
so next, um, really quick, your group buttons. Basically, this groups this enables you to group different sounds together for different purposes, whatever you want, however you want. So for my purposes, right here I have my drums. So if I, I, I play what I have totally, this is my basic master beat, what I have so far. And put the volume up. And basically if I wanted to, I could just solo the beats, the, um, the drums, hit solo and then hit A for the drum. That's where I put my drums and now it's just going to be... And I can do vice versa and I can hit solo and hit my sound that I just put in there. And basically that's really where your groups does and it, it, it really helps you um, just put all your samples and all your sounds and, and, and helps you organize them. So we'll go more into depth and we'll be using groups later um, in a later tutorial.